Hello and welcome to vodcast number 11A. I'm Mr. Galladay and this is Honors Biology for Desert Ridge High School. Uh, today we're going to be talking about proteins and proteins are the most complex of all of the macromolecules uh, that we're going to be talking about. You're, what you see on your screen right now are nine different proteins of the hundreds of millions of different types. Um, you probably are used to thinking of protein as being uh, one type of thing, but in fact uh, you are made of uh, millions of different types of, if, well hundreds of thousands if not millions of different types of proteins. Uh, we are constantly discovering new ones uh, and new variations uh, and the number of different uh, variations of types of proteins is virtually infinite. Um, so there is no limit to uh, the, the variations of different types of proteins. Um, as you can see, these are all uh, quite large. Uh, these are in the hundreds of thousands of different um, units long, and the, the, the uh, monomers, of course, that make up uh, proteins are amino acids, and we're going to be uh, seeing that very soon. These are, uh, just just for quick reference, these are not the actual colors. The, the different colors that you see are there to um, show different features of the, uh, of the shape. Um, the sh it is, of course, the shape of the proteins that is the most important uh, feature. It's what allows them to do their functions, their individual functions that we'll be seeing as we go through this. Okay, uh, this is probably a good point to update your, uh, your table of contents and your notebook before we get started. Um, proteins are, uh, they're used for structure, movement, and controlling chemical reactions within all of our cells. Uh, cells, of course, are the basic unit of living things. Cells are uh, the, the most uh, the smallest unit that has all the characteristics of living things. Uh, proteins are not only involved in the structure, but they are what allow us to move. They are specialized pro proteins that allow us to move. Uh, there are specialized proteins called enzymes that control the uh, chemical reactions within our bodies, uh, and as well as uh, give our cells their shape and, and structure and so forth. There are 20 different amino acids, and we'll give you just a brief introduction to that in, uh, in, in a little bit. Um, and each of those different amino acids has a different characteristic. Uh, you can think of it as being a little bit like the letters of the alphabet. Uh, we have 26 different letters in the alphabet, and if you think about how many different books you can write with those 26 letters, well, the number is uh, virtually infinite. Uh, and so with those 20 different amino acids, the number of different proteins that we can make um, is virtually infinite. Uh, it's the sequence that, though, just as the sequence of, of different letters uh, change the meaning of words, change the meaning of sentences, changes the meaning or, or the content of a book, um, just so like that, uh, as we change the sequence of amino acids, that's what changes the, the shape and the meaning of um, of the protein. Uh, chains of amino acids fold uh, into making a, a specific three-dimensional structure. Uh, and that three-dimensional structure, once that's all folded into place, is what we call a protein. Uh, and we'll show you some examples of how that works in, in just a little bit. Uh, but every amino acid starts off as just a long, or every protein, I should say, starts off as a long chain of amino acids uh, that then, based on, on particular rules, uh, folds into a particular shape, and that's what gives that protein its particular function. Um, all proteins can be broken. Uh, in other words, they can be damaged by heat, uh, acid, base, or basically the, the, in the, the, the wrong pH uh, can uh, change uh, the shape, which is essentially damages the, the function of the protein. Um, one example of this that you are all familiar with, uh, there is a protein uh, 
called albumin that is in all eggs. And as you're aware, when you uh, break open an egg, the, the white of the egg is uh, clear and runny. But when you uh, expose that to heat, um, it solids up, uh, becomes more solid, and uh, is no longer clear, but takes on a whitish color, a white color. Uh, the reason it does that is because that protein has been denatured, has been changed uh, by the presence of that heat. So it's the sequence of amino acids, uh, the, the order that they're in, that changes the characteristics of the protein. That's what determines its shape, that's what determines what the protein does. Um, each amino acid, which is the monomer, has a particular group on that that, uh, that gives it, uh, that amino acid its various traits. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a minute. Um, these R groups have, uh, they, they may be hydrophobic, meaning that they, are, uh, they don't like water, or they may be hydrophilic, meaning that they like water. Uh, they may have positive charges, negative charges, or so forth, which causes them to either be attracted or repulsed by other amino acids. All right, so this is one of the more uh, simpler amino acids. This one is called alanine. Uh, the little the, the th little model that you see up in the upper right hand corner over here, uh, this shows you what the thing looks like. Uh, it gives you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like in three dimensional shape. This is our, uh, our structural diagram of, of what the, the thing looks like. Um, each amino acid uh, has three main groups. There's an amino group. This is what gives the amino acid its name. Uh, this nitrogen, every amino acid has a nitrogen here. Um, it also has a carboxyl. This is a very weak acid. Um, and, and then there is something called the R group. Uh, and the R group is what varies from uh, amino acid to amino acid. Each of these are the same, the amino group uh, and the carboxyl group is the same. This is how they connect to each other to form a chain. Uh, the carboxyl group connects to the amino group, and then you have this, uh, this R group that is uh, different. This is the R group uh, on this particular structure. This is the uh, amino. This blue uh, sphere is the, is the, is the nitrogen, uh, and then this over here is the, uh, the carboxyl. Okay. Um, this slide, and you don't have to copy all this down. Oh, incidentally, this I would like for you to copy into your notes. This diagram I'd like for you to copy. Uh, this is um, uh, just so that you have at least one um, of the amino acids uh, in your notes, uh, and then note which is the amino and which is the carboxyl and which is the R group on alanine. Okay, so uh, what all of the different amino acids, this is what they all look like. Um, there are 20 different amino acids. And as you can see, there are uh, many different R groups. The R groups are what are, are highlighted in pink. Uh, this is glycine. It's the simplest amino acid. All it has for an R group is a, is a single hydrogen atom. Um, alanine, which is what we just saw, is also quite simple. It has just uh, a CH3, the, the carbon with three hydrogens attached to it. Um, and then, as you can see, they become quite large and quite complex. Tryptophan uh, has this large structure for an R group. Uh, they also form large chains. Uh, this, these groups, each of these has a positive charge. Uh, each of these has a negative charge. Uh, these are all... Uh, amino acids that their R group um, is uncharged and it and they are but they are polar meaning that they will uh, dissolve in water uh, these are nonpolar um, R groups um, and so these have these different characteristics which allows them to be either attracted to different ones or repelled by different ones we're not going to get a whole lot into the details of of that uh, in this class uh, if you take a class in um, molecular biology or in um, biochemistry, then you will uh, learn an awful lot about amino acids. Uh, but for this class, 
Uh, we're not going to get into the details of that. So each of these uh, amino acids is, is assembled into a long chain. Uh, and then depending on their, their chain, or depending on their sequence in the chain, they're going to then either, some are going to be attracted to each other. So in this case, this is folding in this particular shape here because the amino acids over here are going to be attracted to these over here. So this is going to form a particular shape based on their attraction to each other or their repulsion from each other. Um, I'm going to show you a little animation next <clears throat> that kind of gives you an idea of how that happens. Um, and what you're going to see is uh, groups of amino acids that are attracted to each other and, and that's going to cause them to uh, fold into a particular shape. Okay, so what you see here uh, are these groups uh, of amino acids that are uh, basically moving around as they, they find the way that they are, are best attracted to each other. Um, and there they're nearly in their final state. Uh, and once those, they're, they're, now they've reached their final uh, state to where they're, um, they, well, it's, it's at the lowest energy level uh, where they, the, the, the shape uh, basically is uh, at its uh, most stable is, I guess, the best way to think of that. All of these things have a variety of positions that they can move around in it. As you see the, uh, the models that I have in the classroom, uh, different things can twist around in different positions. And there's one position uh, in, in which it, the, the molecule is its most stable. Okay, so once it reaches that stable uh, configuration, uh, then we say that it's at its lowest energy level. It's at the, uh, its final correct shape. And right there is what you see. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is a pretty good place to hold it up. This has been Vodcast 11A, uh, which has been on proteins.